Okay, welcome everybody. This is a slideshow about online pedagogy and online discussions. Uh, pedagogy refers to education. So what we're talking about, or what I want to talk about, is the theory, the educational theory behind what we're doing and why discussion is so important. So let's begin by just talking about basically what college should do to you. Going to college should should cause some significant changes in the way you think about everything, not just in the way you act in class, but the way you think in general. Uh, so what type of changes? Cognition. First off, you should begin to recognize that there are unconscious and conscious cognitive processes and that most of the time people are thinking unconsciously. They're just responding to things. And oftentimes what we have to do is assert some effort to actually start to think about things consciously and systematically. Uh, you should recognize that learning facts is not enough. Uh, facts change. The facts that I learned in college are really uh, you know, outdated by now. So you could say my whole college career was a waste because what I learned, the facts that I learned, are no longer relevant. But that's not true because I learned not just to memorize facts and regurgitate them, but I learned some things about facts. I learned about how facts are developed, how they're analyzed, uh, how they're challenged. Those are the important things you learn in college. So what that means is uh, we're going to look at the development of your cognitive processes in college. We're going to want you to articulate your thinking. Articulate means to expand out. So when I say, or when any professor says, what do you think is going to happen, we always want you to articulate your response, not just, well, yes, no, or I think this will happen. Why? Talk about your thought process. Catalog or timeline your thought process and tell it to us. Uh, we want you to explore cognitive conflicts. Some things conflict with each other. One of the more difficult classes in psychology is personality theory, and that's because that class, every week you do a different uh, theory of personality, and they often conflict with each other. And some students, oh, you know, like, why, why are you telling me this week that, that I should not worry about dreams because last week you told me that dreams were important? And the answer is, well, today we're studying Skinner, and Skinner feels that dreams aren't important. Last week we were studying Freud, and Freud said dreams are important. Well, which is right? You know, and students really don't understand that part of the college experience is understanding that these conflicts exist. And then what you need to do is you need to understand how you create new knowledge and the construction of new knowledge. And usually that occurs as a co-construction where people are working together to develop new knowledge, that is, new facts. All this can be uh, met by what we call metacognitive thinking. Meta means after, so metacognitive means a higher order of cognitive thinking, where we're thinking about thinking. So metacognitive means thinking about thinking. So you should always be asking yourself questions. What do these facts mean? What can I do with these facts? How were they created? How do we know we're accurate? Could they change? Those are really the important metacognitive questions. So we want to have online activities that encourage this metacognitive thinking. So what are those activities? It's interactions. Just taking a quiz or doing an assignment by yourself online is not going to do it. Interacting with other students uh, in discussion. Interacting with students in collaborative uh, projects. Interacting with your professor online. These are the things that are going to encourage metacognitive thinking. And so therefore, an online course is going to focus on these activities to a, a very large extent. It'll probably drive you crazy. So we're going to have collaborative projects this semester. Uh, we have the research wiki. Uh, some of the benefits, you're going to develop some of the skills sought after in business. Uh, you're going to work with other people in a team, a, a work group. That is a very highly sought after skill in the business world. 
also these are going you know, you're going to get the benefits of the metacognitive thinking where you're going to have to you know talk to other people defend your ideas to other people understand why other people are disagreeing with you and work with other people so whenever at York we talk about group work uh, students really don't like it and I'm not surprised because uh, we see a lot of uh, bad behavior by students especially when they're working in uh, work groups there are some problems you run into first off there's the free rider problem that is uh, some students are just not going to do any work but expect to receive the grade uh, that the group gets uh, this is not going to happen in this class if you don't do the work you won't get a grade uh, one way that I deal with the uh, free rider uh, problem is we do a peer evaluation at the end of every stage of a group process uh, project I'll ask each person individually to do a peer evaluation and based on those evaluations I may lower the grade from the group grade of one or two individuals or three uh, depending upon the peer evaluation now that strikes many students as fair but then other students say well what if like somebody doesn't like me and they lie about me and so what I have is the individual activity blog uh, you have individually on blackboard an individual activity blog this is for you to document the group work you do it'll timestamp the group work so if somebody does try to pull something on you you can just pull out your blog and it always exists and just say well no you see on this date I said I did this I copied it into my blog and I said that I shared it with my group so you know you can't say that I didn't do any work and that's the purpose of the blog uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to do it or not I'm only going to look at it unless there's a problem but in business we talk about CYA cover your ass and that is you need to have a paper trail that protects you in case something bad happens and the individual activity blogs are just that a CYA and so you should learn to do that to CYA uh, another problem is the divide and conquer problem uh, students will say oh so on the research wiki there needs to be four pages you do one page you do another page you do a third page you do a fourth page uh, that's not going to work because this is a group project it's not a you know nominal group of four people individually working together uh, you have to have time for people to work together to see what one person has done and to merge them together and then look at the whole thing and edit it as a group uh, and the research wiki is just not going to work if you divide it up equally among uh, the five of you or the six of you and each of you take a part you have to bring it all back together and you have to you know create a whole based on the whole group that means that you're going to have to do a lot of checking your uh, group uh, discussion board often uh, and responding shortly but you know not taking a long time but responding often to comments other people are you know, uh, you know giving and then finally there's the bad member problem uh, the they don't deliver when it's due problem the we're not getting along problem and the I can't contact anyone problem and my response to that is uh, that is what the way most uh, group projects work in real life uh, last year the president president keys appointed me the chair of a special committee with students and faculty members and administrators on it and there's about 10 people on it and in the end only about three people worked on it with me and I did not go to President Keyes and said oh well uh, I don't have the report for you because you know most of the committee members wouldn't get back to me uh, that wouldn't go well uh, I was the chair and I had to get it done regardless and I was going to get it done regardless and so you need to start to recognize that a lot of students say that's fair uh, that's unfair uh, that's you know not true in this class it's going to be fair because if people don't do work you submit your peer evaluation and they're not going to get a grade okay so let's talk about some discussion forum basics 
Uh, here is what a discussion forum look lo looks like, especially on uh, Blackboard uh, uh, 8. And making an original post. Uh, usually make an original post in a new thread. A new thread will allow you to give a uh, subject, which you can basically give it an informative title. So I've given you some examples of informative titles here. And what's in an original post? Uh, answer the question po uh, posed, posed in the assignment. So articulate, there's that word again, your original assumptions and articulate what changed, that is what you've learned, what conflict entailed to your original assumptions. Grading, uh, I'm going to look at the volume of the contribution, that is the length of it. I'm going to look at your writing, uh, whether or not there's mistakes, whether it's obvious that you've proofread. Uh, I'm going to look at the depth, whether or not I can tell that you've really thought about it. A lot of students try to dash off something that they think will just do, but that doesn't really get to the depth of what any professor wants. And it does not get uh, to the sophistication. So here's a sample. You can stop the slideshow and read it. And this would be a good example of uh, an original post. And here's another one. You can stop and read it of a original post. And this is an example of an unacceptable original post. And I can tell you that this would receive no grade on one of my discussion forums. Help with original posts. Uh, it's just going to take some brain work. You're just going to have to set aside some time and really think about it. Uh, I talk about aha moments or eureka moments. And uh, that takes basically insight. And insight requires number one preparation. That is, you have to know the material that the assignment is based upon. You have to read it. You have to learn it, take notes from it. And then incubation. Incubation means you set everything aside and do something else and let it incubate in your mind. So that's going to take time. Uh, also, uh, my web page on how to write an interpretation uh, may actually help you there also. So you want to take a look at that. Replying, check in often, read new posts. Uh, after the original post deadline, read all the posts carefully, take notes. Yeah, take notes. Uh, ask people for explanations. When you ask them, articulate your understanding what the post's author said, and then articulate, that is, expand out why you need more explanation. Articulate your perspective, and then articulate how it is in conflict with the post's author. There we get back to articulation and conflict. Here's a good reply. Uh, stop and uh, take a look at it. And here's a bad reply that would get no grade in one of my forums. And here is the rainbow at the end of the video lecture.